All right, y'all, welcome in. Welcome into Sports with Balls. I am Jeff Michael here at Christian's Tailgate 2000 Bagby. We are live on a Tuesday edition of Sports with Balls. Lots going on. Lots happened over the weekend. We're going to get to all of it. Some breaking news today uh, in the NFL and, and announcing-wise. Uh, man, I got Enrique here with me today. What's up? What up, what up, man? A lot of y'all know Enrique. He helps produce the show over here, man. But uh, we're having a blast. Welcome in episode 196. Sports with balls, man. Uh, I, I'm excited to be here again. Down here at Christmas Tailgate 2000 Bagby. Let's get this show on the road. Like I said, there is a lot going on. Number one. Well, you know, before we get to what went on today, did you watch the Derby this weekend? I did not, man. I've been super oh, busy. But man. I heard, man. I heard. It's crazy. The Kentucky Derby this weekend was un. Unbelievable! The call was unbelievable. The crowd was unbelievable. The weather was unbelievable. Uh, it is the fastest two minutes in sports, and it, I love it. It's exciting, bro. Like, I mean, <laughs> it, I get fired up over that thing. I have my TV on a hundred. I have surround sound turned up. Uh, it, it's 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 awesome. What's up, Kevin Anthony? What's up? A couple people joining in. If y'all are tuning in on Twitter, on YouTube, on Facebook, on uh, WhatsApp, on Twitch, like man, welcome into the party. <laughs> this is sports with balls, man. Um, yeah, this horse, man, this horse was unbelievable. And I watched it over and over again today. It's crazy. He came from nowhere. Yeah, wasn't he like in six or something? Oh, uh, he was way back. Way back. back he was, yeah. like, he, there was 21 horses in the race. He, he was probably 18th at one, at one time. God. And it was phenomenal to watch him, to watch him go. Like, oh, my son, my son just said, hey, daddy. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Oh, uh, that's nice. But what's funnier is it came from his mom's account, account so it says, hey, daddy, from Tara Hydor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, funny. wow, that's pretty like funny. <laughs> I'm going to put that up on the screen. There you go. <laughs> Whoa. Um, anyways, yes, yeah, so this horse, Rich, Rich Strike, came from way back, man. And just took off. I mean, took off. And it was phenomenal to sit here and watch. And the call, uh, I forgot the guy's name that does the call, the Kentucky Derby, but he was he was fantastic. And it was it was baller. Like, it was baller. Yeah. So a couple of things about this horse, man. Okay, tell me, tell me. He, he entered the race on Friday, the day before. Oh. It was like one of the last second uh, entries. Like for, late notice. Yeah, real okay. late. So entered the race late on Friday. He started off at 99 to 1. 99 to 1 is what this horse started off with. Wow. And the guy, the the uh, the horse stable, they bought him for $30,000. And one of okay. the owners, so the owner, and they had a stable prior to this. He had a horse fire in 2016 and lost 21 horses. Gosh, man. Oh, that's, wow. oof, that's, that's terrible. That's like, horrible. Unreal. They had a, a fire in their barn and lost 21 of their horses. So... Uh, it, it's just amazing what what the guy's been through, and then to come back. So he went off. Rich Strike goes off at eighty to one odds. I saw the odds. I saw the so odds. So that's a hundred dollars wins you eight thousand dollars. One of the long one one of the biggest upsets in sports history by far. Oh now, yeah. You know if you, if you're not, I mean, if you're not familiar with sports upsets, there's been a ton. I mean, you, you, this is up there with the twenty eight to three comeback. Huh. This is up there with the USA men's hockey. Like, this is insane. 80 to 1 odds. Like, woo. Yeah, that's crazy. And I saw Mattress Mag lost his bet. Oh, did he? He lost his bet. Yeah. Oh, he, need, he needs to stop betting. <laughs> Dude, he is good. I, I the last, tried... what, two years, he's just been getting. Well, no, since the Astros in 2017. Yeah, tw since 2017. So five years. Yeah. He needs to stop betting because I'm trying to get a, a full set <laughs> from there. But he keeps on losing. I need to get something for free. Mattress Mac is a uh, furniture uh, warehouse guy here in Houston, and he 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 makes bets on if you buy three thousand dollars. It's around three thousand dollars or two thousand dollars worth of furniture. If your horse, if the horse wins, the I think this one was it, it was the betting favorite. Uh, the odds on favorite won the Kentucky Derby. That uh, you would get all your stuff for free. Yeah, everything for free. Yeah. Well, if he didn't win. So if if he wins, then you got to pay for it. If he didn't, no, win, no, no, no. If he wins, if he, everything's for free. Okay, so at the, the favorite, yeah, yeah, gotcha. yeah. And he's been placing uh, two million dollar bets on on the World Series winners, and and then that that transfers over to if you buy three thousand dollars worth of furniture, you get it for free. And if yeah. not, you got to pay for it. Uh, I, I I would love to know if he actually has how those bets have turned out. I think he has a really bad record at betting. <laughs> it's gambling, it's and gambling. I look, I oh, love yeah. to gamble. 
Uh, I mean, now, and you know, speaking of that, and we're, we're talking about the, the horse race on Saturday, the Kentucky Derby, the run for the roses. I didn't bet on this one. <laughs> and I, I usually I go to the horse track here, Sam Houston horse track. Uh, I don't know, two, three times a year. My dogs won the wiener dog races over there. Ricky Bobby. Uh, you know, I, I, I go there quite often. You know right? Ricky Bobby? Yeah, my dog's weaned Oh, I love that name. Ricky Bobby. Amazing, yeah. amazing. So I, I go over to the horse races by probably two, three times a year, especially the live ones. And mm, okay. that one day I just didn't – I've been over there and, and placed my money on, on the Kentucky Derby before, and I always take the long shot. Now, I didn't look at the rest of the field. There might have been an 85 to 1. There might have been a 99 to 1. I don't know. But something tells me I would have put some money on like on Rich Strike to win, yeah. just because I love put like I'll do a, a trifecta and throw in I'll, th- I'll throw in a long shot just to make it interesting, you know? Yeah, why and, not? Why not? Yeah, and man, I I like to. Oh, yeah, I, I don't know nothing about horse racing at all, but I'm barely getting into like all the other stuff. It's fun. I'm barely get into it. It's, it's fun. Wow. Yeah. So Rich Strike goes off at an eighty to one odds, and I mean, and the reason the reason that Rich Strike won this won this race was because it was a mile and a quarter. And he's 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 great on long tracks. This is the longest one out of the triple crown. The others are the others are a mile uh, or less than a mile and a quarter track gave him that extra he would have came in third, fourth, or fifth if he didn't have that extra quarter mile. Mm, okay. So it was it was meant for him. This was oh, this one was meant dude. for him. I mean so they bought the horse for thirty thousand dollars and on that day, this is just what they won in purse money was one point eight five million. <sighs> <laughs> that's like God. Jerry Jones Cowboys stuff right there. <laughs> like turning, I mean, turning 30 grand into $1.85 million. And now that, that farm and that ranch are going to blow up because oh, yeah. they can sell his offspring for probably 20, $30 million. Oh yeah. Hands down. That's boom. Uh, just uh, Big immediately boom right a 50 to a hundred million dollar horse. Like oh, yeah. in the ranch and everything. Cause uh, wow. I mean, he won the Kentucky oh. Derby. Mm-hmm. Unbelievable. Uh, a great, if you have not watched it, Go watch the replay. It is fantastic. It, it it gave me chills listening to it this afternoon again and watching it. They had the little arrow on him, and I just watched him where he came from. I like, saw the uh, arrow. It was just going wow, through. Dude. It, was it was just going through. It was awesome. It was absolutely amazing to watch. One of the biggest upsets in sports history. Uh, good good for that whole barn, the tr- horse trainers, all of them. They all – they did the interview with these guys afterwards, and they all looked like – Really genuine cool people. And, of course, we know Bob Baffert, who's the most famous horse trainer out there, was suspended. His horse last year uh, got uh, busted for for steroids. And then the horse died over the last summer. So that was all tragic. But Bob Baffert was suspended and wasn't there and obviously didn't have a horse in it. But, uh, <laughs> hey, listen, Kevin Anthony decided to chime in on, on, the, on the message board on here. And he says, uh, rent-free, you can always count on Jeff talking about the Cowboys. That was a good Cowboys thing. <laughs> It was a good one. I just Come I wasn't on, talking. Man. I wasn't talking shit. I, I was just saying that you know that's like Jerry Jones turned around with the Cowboys. Yeah. He bought him for like two hundred million or three hundred million, and now they're worth like almost four billion dollars. Yeah, it's a good compliment, man. Let us slide. Slow Let down slide. there, Kevin. Slow down. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, I'm glad. I'm glad y'all comment, man. Leave your comments. I'll try to get to them as soon as I can, man. This is Sports with Balls. I'm Jeff Michael. Got our producer Enrique here on the mic with us as well. Uh, I want to thank a couple of people while we're on the subject. Attorney Brian White, man, I hope all of y'all made it through the weekend safe and sound. Uh, I know trying to go down to Galveston this weekend was an absolute disaster. I've, I haven't been there in a while. I went on Sunday, but I heard okay. Saturday people were walking on the freeway because it was so like you couldn't get down there. They had construction. They had the bridge blocked off. But uh, I went down there Sunday. And happy Mother's Day. Happy belated Mother's Day to a lot of people. And also a very happy birthday to my daughter today. She's 10 years oh, old. Oh, wow. 10. 10, bro. Wow. 10. Time's flying, man. She's 10 years old today, man. Amazing. But if you do happen to go out, something happens, or you get in a wreck, you get in trouble, call Attorney Brian White, 713-500-5000. That's Brian at attorneybrianwhite.com. The man is flat out amazing. Call him if you have any sort of issues. And if you're in any state over here, because I know – my boy Fitz has a ton of licenses now in different states. He's in Tennessee and Nashville and obviously all over Texas for, for storm damage and for roofing. It, it doesn't even have to be storm damage. It'd be anything. Guy will come fix your Ooh. roof for you. 832-521-3001. That's F-I-T-Z roofing.com. Look them up, man. H-A-R-C-A certified, which is a big deal these days. And they did my roof and they were fantastic. Man. They washed, they power washed my driveway, pressure washed the side of the house, make sure no nails. Uh, everything, everything. Uh, unbelievable company, man. You get your roof done, call Fitz. 832 521 
3001. Um, All right, I keep man. that in mind. I keep that one in mind. Yeah, it was a crazy weekend, man. It was it was fun. Uh, cause Mother's Day was Sunday. We we went down to Galveston with me and a few buddies. Man, we had an absolute amazing time. Did your mom have a good one? Yeah, she had a good one, but I had to work on Sunday. But today is actually Mother's Day in Mexico. Oh, so, happy Mother's Day to everybody in Mexico. Yeah, for sure. yeah. So I, I I bought a couple of things today because you know uh, I didn't I didn't get her anything on Sunday because I had to work. So you know today was like a good day. So like you know, like I took her out to eat and all that. Boom. Stuff. There you go. One thing that uh, one thing that's going on here in Houston, or at least down south, man, the heat. Oh, my if God. y'all remember last year, it really wasn't that hot. It wasn't. No, I, it, it, I think it never got in the hundreds. It might have reached ninety eight, ninety nine a couple of times. It was a nice. It was ninety two to ninety five in the summer. Yeah, here but year. now it's early. Yeah, it is. It's supposed to be ninety eight this next week, and Bowman. Like, I mean, this is early. This is an early summer, and. <laughs> It's hot, bro. I think we just got into spring also. This I had is, this is spring. I, I had to move my couch in my garage and my man cave set up in my, ca- <laughs> in my so I could park my truck in there. Yeah. So it's not 125 degrees when I get in. You got leather seats? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Dude, it's burning, bro. Good call on that one. Good it call. It is burning up in H-Town, and so is sports with balls, man. We've got a lot of things to talk about. Uh, let me get to them real quick. Yeah, First go off, ahead, go ahead. before we get into this NBA, there was a contract signed today for $375 million. Whoa. And they're not playing a sport. It was 10 years. Oh, no, he is this year. But this is for not playing sports. Oh, hold on. What? I did not Fox see this. Fox Sports announced today they have signed Tom Brady to 10 years, $375 million to be their lead analyst. Whenever he retires, Ooh. to me that says he's retiring next year. Oh, yeah. Why the hell? Like, yeah. I mean, like, unless something tragic happens, this is Tom Brady's last year. This is it. This is it. Yeah. He just got a ten-year. That's thirty-seven million a year. Yep. Get that bread. Get that bread, Tom. That's it. Here, I'll do the math he for you. I'll he do the math it. for you real quick. This is crazy. All right, let's do thirty-seven million. All right, go ahead. Let's do it. Divided by, let's just say he does all seventeen games. Okay. Per game, $2.2 million. He said. Per game. He won. He he won life. That's it. He's only made 320 in his NFL career. So this blows his NFL money out the door. Yep. Can't say goodbye. That's that's done. Combined, it's seven it, combined, Tom Brady will have made seven hundred million dollars. And you know with his endorsements, he's gonna he's way over a billionaire. Yeah. Way over. Like, I mean. Holy crap, dude. All right, good going, Tom. Yeah, I mean, look, yeah. if you could get it, fine. But in all honesty, do you tune into an NFL game because of their broadcasters? Well, it depends. I think you'll stay tuned to one. Yeah. But I don't think you're like, oh, the, I'm going to listen to the uh, Cowboys-Giants game because of uh, who's announcing it. You never know who's announcing You just turn it on, you're like, oh, there they are. <laughs> yeah. You know Monday Night Football just because it's Monday Night Football. Exactly, yeah. I think, but on any given Sunday, you don't know who the announcers are. True, yeah. I'm not yeah. going to turn. I'm not going to tune into a Fox game because I know Tom Brady's announcing it. In fact, I think he's going to be terrible. I really do. I think Tom oh. Brady has a great sense of humor, but it's okay, really dry. Yeah. And man, Tom looks a little slow at times. You know, processing stuff. Like, yeah. and I, I just, I, to to give him such a big contract, like without it, like Peyton Manning, you can see Peyton's kind of born for that kind of stuff. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, Peyton. Uh, Peyton Manning's he's meant for that. I, I, well, I don't know about uh, Tony Romo, though. I, I love Tony. Know. I love Tony. I mean, I don't like because he's a cowboy, but uh, <laughs> other than that, yeah, man, I don't we, know. Cowboys are, cowboy talk today is going to get heavy. I love yeah, it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> There's that this there you go, Kevin. There you go, Kevin. Yeah, so three, uh, 10 years, $375 million, and the guy's never been in a booth. And look, he's done commercials, and he does have a sense of humor. I don't know how that's going to translate. And I, I, look, I'm just telling you from my – my opinion wise, I don't see Tom Brady calling games being that good. Like I just don't. And it's all about who you're with too. And I forgot the guy's name that's going to be with him, but it, you know, I, you've got to have chemistry there. Yeah. I think I being think, in this business, I know that. Yeah. I think they're going to do some sort of like, uh, Eli. No, no, like Eli he's already set with somebody here. I'll, I'll tell you who it is okay. here in a second, man. But yeah, he's already set. And it, this is insane to give him that much money. I, it just is like, I don't, I don't care. Like it's absolutely nuts to give him three hundred seventy-five more more money than he made in his entire football career. 
Yeah, because the way how I see it, if they're going to give two people, I think they're going to try to do like the, uh, like on Monday Night Football, they do that uh, Eli Manning, Peyton Manning type of thing. Yeah, exactly. Well, like the whole like talk show type thing. That, that's what I'm thinking. No, they, they, I mean, Fox doesn't have anything set up currently to do that. So I forgot the guy's name. It doesn't say it on here. It's just all about Brady, 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 Brady. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it, it is what it is. I mean, if you can get it, get it. Um, another thing that shocked me about Tom Brady signing this is, first of all, why would they announce it this year? Because to me, it just says, hey, I'm retiring. Like, yeah. this is my last year. I just got 375 whenever I walk away. So that's that's a really big incentive to walk away. But also on the flip side of that, I thought he wanted time with his family. I thought his whole thing was like, okay, you know, when I retire from football, I'm a family man. This is, man, that's a busy schedule. Oh, yeah. Because he's I mean, also like an ambassador for, for Fox Sports, it says on the whole thing. Like, I mean, this is going to keep him back in the sport, back busy. I would have taken at least a year off. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, he's got kids and Giselle. I mean, so that means when he was telling us, Last year, the end of last year, oh, I need, I need time off. Uh, I'm going to go be with my family. Remember the whole Miami uh, Miami Dolphins thing? Like, he was yeah. going to be a, a percentage owner of, of Miami Dolphins. And that fell apart because of the Brian Flores thing. But now he, he joins Fox Sports, and he's going to stay in football. And that's going to keep – he's going to travel at least eight weeks out of the – eight weeks out of the football season. Hey, but maybe, maybe all – I mean, I would think <laughs> – all, all 17. I, I don't know. I just. No, I doubt dude, all 17. I, really well, I mean, doubt unless it. they're home games. Oh, well, I don't know. Maybe. But, hey, that that, that family going to be real hefty with that money. So. Well, yeah, I'm sure Giselle was like 375. I mean, I, what do you do? Exactly. The, yeah. <laughs> if he was going to be an announcer, like the, the general consensus was that maybe, maybe it would be 20 million a year. Like somewhere around 20, 25. Not 37 Point five million dollars a year, man. That is, I get it. That it's Tom Brady. I totally understand it. That's way too That's, much, though, man. Way too much. That is up there with the Deshaun Watson thing, where I'm like, I'm just mind blown. Yeah, like, holy crap, dude. That is a lot. Dude. That is a lot of money. I just, man, unbelievable. He's scheduled to make fifteen million dollars this year. That means next year he'll double his salary and will not be playing football. Yeah, I wouldn't play football either. For that money, nah. <laughs> no. I, no. Flat out, this is Tom's last season. Yeah. They, they, like, all y'all that didn't know that this was Tom Brady's last season. Now you know. And, and maybe they allowed him to they uh, to say this, you know, already because he'll come out in, pre, in spring training and say, okay, this is it. I, you know, I, I'm done. Because, yeah. come on, dude. You had no incentive after this. To so, play. basically, this this season coming up, it's his, it's his February tour. It's his tour. That's, That's what I'm saying. That's like, it. and he'll admit he'll admit it. Uh, probably like I said in preseason somewhere that he'll be like, hey, you know, I'm. I mean, th this like to me confirms that it's his last year. I don't know why he would come back to football next year. I wouldn't. Mm. And yeah. to, and also, uh, man, what if Tampa Bay starts off not that hot? What if they miss the playoffs? Or, or I mean, dude, I get Tom Mace. <laughs> I don't know why they would come say this right now. There's so many scenarios that open up. Yeah, I because think, of this. I mean, if he gets injured, yeah, uh, he's gonna call it a day, like yeah. early. Like, the, let's say he gets a knee injury in the third week, he could possibly come back in week ten. No, he'll be like, screw it, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, man, I think this was a bit too early to to announce it. I think it, if he would have lost in the playoffs, announce it like within an hour. Yeah, this I mean, shocking, but dude, ten years, three hundred seventy-five million for Fox Sports, lead analyst and ambassador for them. Uh, unbelievable. Yeah. That's unbelievable amount of money. I don't know how I feel about that, but I don't know. Maybe he'll he'll shock everybody. He'll he'll become one of like, like he'll be a good announcer. Maybe I don't know. I'm just saying. I, yeah, I don't see it, man. I I love Tom to death, but. Most of the time, players that move to the booth, it doesn't translate. They've tried out a lot of players before, and they just, it doesn't translate. you got to have a, sp a certain personality. You've got to fit with what's going on. You've gotta, it's, it's different than being on the field. And Tom's great at, like, Saturday Night Live type stuff and, mm -hmm. and like, reading, reading Twitters on late-night shows or something, you know, <laughs> like that kind of <laughs> stuff. But, and him being in the booth is uh, – man, I, don't, I, don't, I just I don't see it, man. What about Tom having his own show? I say I don't see it, but it's $375 million. It doesn't matter what I see. Yeah, what about Tom having his own show, though? Like what? Like, 
um, uh, like SNL, like give him his own day. Oh, I mean, yeah, yeah give well, give think, him his own day. I think Peyton Manning's better at that kind of stuff. Like Peyton Manning's fantastic. Like I, I love watching Peyton on all basically all the stuff he does. And Tom Brady's getting three three seventy five simply because his he won that many Super. Bowls. Yeah. And he's he's like the goat. He's been in there for eighteen plus years now. It's like that's the only reason. Yeah, if that wasn't the case, no. Kiss time when a goodbye. Yep. It'll yeah. be, be down to like to twenty and seventy five million dollars. Wow. Mm-mm-mm. All right, on to the next hot subject that came up uh, yesterday. As a matter of fact, um, Chris Paul's wife at the game. Oh no! And. I guess somebody had – well, okay, so I don't know why they were holding the video back as, as long and as hard as they did. I saw it today. It's he, horrible, this kid, this, th- Nobody shoved anybody. All right, so the media blew it up like somebody shoved Chris Paul's wife. It wasn't, that wasn't the case. It wasn't the case at all. And, uh, yes, they're trying to – it's very awkward, but it, there, there's no aggressive movements. Like, like I think Chris Paul maybe blew it out of promotion. I know the media did 100%. But should he, should he be touching anybody? No. No. Not at all. You don't need to be touching anybody and either trying to get a picture, whatever the case may be, or heckling. We've, we've had a couple of instances like this – so far with Draymond flicking off the crowd and right before the playoffs started, you know, fans kind of going after athletes and they need to get control of this. Yeah. They got it because in hockey, they've got the glass screen to protect from the pucks, but that glass screen is there to also protect people from (laughs) cursing at these dudes. Right. And I got to think that the NBA, if this doesn't calm down, will try to implement some sort of protection thing to where the crowd cannot. Because they, I mean, look. No it's, shot. It's, no shot on that, though. It's one thing to, like, it's one thing to get on a player, man. I've been in a game, and I, I remember talking to uh, Tony Parker one time in a Spurs game, man, and I said something about uh, Eve, Eva Longoria, his wife, one time. <laughs> and he turned around and looked at me like, I'm going to whoop your ass, boy. <laughs> like, he did. I, I was in San Antonio, and I said something like, because he was shooting real bad. And, uh, like, I think because it was right when him and Eva were getting a divorce. Yeah. And I didn't cuss at him. I just made a little joke about it, right? And he turned yeah. around because I was only about three or four rows up. He turned around and stared right at me, man. And it was just like, <laughs> man. And, you know, that's personal stuff. And, Again, you could say a shot or two at, at these guys. Look, you paid enough money for these seats, and you know you want to get at them, and that's part of home court advantage. Yeah. But when you start cursing at them and attacking their families, that's another thing. That's another thing. Well, and I mean, just, I, that can't be allowed. Yeah, I think on uh, on CP 3s case, he had like he had a reason to do it also. But I didn't see CP three putting hands on no one and all that. But I mean, if it's my family, I'll, I'm going all out. I don't care. Give give me a charge. I don't care. I am. I'm doing whatever it does. Like you don't. Like keep keep my family out your name. Like you know. Yeah. No. I, I look. I totally get it. Um. <laughs> I I just the NBA needs to step in. I don't know how you stop. You can't stop fans from talking, right? No. Like either the people around you need to be more assertive and tell you to shut up, or somebody. There's got to be. Maybe you put security closer to. Where some of like in, in the stands and fans like so they can you know stop these people from from attacking like it, it, it players should not have to sit on the bench and feel attacked. Yeah, and I, I, think, and I think they do. Yeah, I think the the way how I like it best is um they should do the court more like the March Madness. You know how they have that little step. Uh, like, there's a there's like a ten ten foot barrier in between yeah. the court and uh, I mean you you would hope not you really would hope it doesn't come to that because you know p- fans are now they sit on the floor right yeah. you pay good money for it and you know that's it's Spike Lee down there Jack Nicholas down there you know that that's everyone's down see. there everyone you know and, and, and then and random random Billies in the, in the bottom you, also but now you got kids trying to touch uh, players wives and uh, man it's just not. I, they got to get a hold of this. Yeah, but like I said, cool, this man. is not the first instance. This has been going on for a few months now. Yeah, where it's been where, where wasn't it the, the the Grizzlies? There, there were the first yeah, ones. The they got three fans back and back. a Dallas fan. This, this was Dallas. This was a Dallas Maverick fan, obviously. Yeah. Um, but before that, uh, LeBron had almost gotten in a fight. Uh, Carmelo, I think, almost got in a fight. That like before the playoffs even started, there were there had been incidents during the season that it got nasty. It yeah. got real bad, and so. This is a this is a what I would think an uh, an accumulation of everything kind of building up and then boom, so you you just can't have another fan 
touching a player's wife. Yeah, I would not and be I, surprised. Listen, it wasn't that aggressive. I'm just, regardless if it was like aggressive hands. or not. Just yeah, put yeah. hands. Don't put hands on my wife. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, I won't be surprised if the finals, we, we see something bigger. I well, would not be surprised. The, I think that the NBA is going to step in and have security down. Like, there's going to be a measurement now. Like, if somebody starts really talking or saying something, then you'll have you'll see a security guard step in now. They'll have to beef up security. That's that's the only – other than putting glass in front of them where they can't talk to them. Uh, I, but, no, nah, don't do security. that. That beats the whole purpose of the thing. But I we, mean, see, we see NFL, too. Uh, there's nothing you can do. They fight. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. at any rivalry game, the a Dallas Giants game or or a Packers 49ers game, like yeah. you see ball out fights, man, all over the internet. I don't understand yeah. all that, but I, you can't. How are you going to control that? You can't. Yeah. Just let them let them do it. Yeah. Just, let them fight they, it out. They go at it. Trust me, they go. Hey, remember? Well, I, 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 <laughs> go for it. Go for it. Go for it. <laughs> I'm not going to say it. Kevin will jump on me, man. <laughs> I don't, don't want to say it. Kevin will jump down me, but. Speaking of the NBA, uh, the playoffs are actually heating up. Uh, it's exciting to watch. I told you about that Golden State Memphis series. Unfortunately, John Morant got hurt. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it, it just came out today saying that he is probably going to miss the rest of the the rest of this playoffs. Yeah, he's Which down they're down three to one now because he didn't play last game. He yeah. got hurt. And he didn't play last game. They lost. They're going back to Phoenix. I mean, uh, Golden State, they're down three to one. Yeah, that's it. I, I I see this. I see this ending. Yeah, pretty. Oh, was it four? Yeah, three one. So it's gonna be four one. Yeah, uh, Wait, oh, it's, be... it's still in Memphis. They got one more game in Memphis. Okay. Now that look, that being said, they played without John Morant for a, a good part of the season this year and did very well. At one point, yeah. I think they were like twelve and one without him. Yeah, I think I think it's a it's a shock to them for right now because it's playoffs and they they think that they need him. But, I mean, if they did it in the past already, they could do it again. So, I, they should be fine. But I think it's more at stake for them. It's more pressure. So they won. Let's see. They won on – when was Saturday? Oh, no. They won Tuesday. Yeah. They won Tuesday, 106, and that tied it up one-to-one. -one. Sorry, you got a mosquito in here. Yeah, that, there's like four of them flying that dude's, around. That dude's biting me. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, losing John Moran obviously is a huge, huge deal. Oh, this is what I was going to say. Because they were down 2-1, to one, and they were in Golden State. And, well, they were down 1-1, one, one, sorry. Or tied up 1-1. One, one, and then the Warriors beat them 142-112 to 112 on Saturday. That's a good. Wow. One wow. by 30. Gosh. That's a good amount. And they'll play. They'll play again. But the uh, Memphis is down 3-1 to one in the series. It's in Memphis with no John Moran. Mm. Should be I, I'm good. Call, I'm calling game time. Yeah. I, I, the, the, the Golden State Warriors move on. But the other series are, are, are also good. you got 76ers of the Heat tied up 2-2. Two to two, And they play tonight. Kyle Lowry is now out for that game, which is huge for the Heat. Ooh. Big time for the Heat. And the Heat were up 2-0. And Joel Embiid was, was hurt. And if you were a Miami fan, things were looking good. You were looking good. Up 2-0, Joel Embiid hurt. Nope, Joel Embiid comes back in game three. They win. <laughs> Plays good in game four. Or Harden actually Harden actually had 31 points and, and, and played pretty decent in game four, and they won. They're Died choking. Of the series. They're choking. And Joel Embiid looks – man, he's not going out of the game now. And the 76ers look like after being down 2-0, I would say for the Heat tonight, this is a must win. They go down because they go back to Philly after this. Oh, yeah, they have to win this one. They have to. I, I say – Miami has to win this game tonight. This is huge for them. And the other game tonight, the late one, the Mavericks at the Phoenix Suns. We had just discussed uh, about Chris Paul and his family. Um, Luka, <laughs> Luka Doncic is, is the Mavericks. He is like, the Mavericks, that's, yeah. that's it, man. Um, From the very get-go, yeah, he's been the Mavericks. The series is tied 2-2, two to two, but I look for Phoenix to come back and blow this one out. Uh, and then go. I, I I say Phoenix wins two in a row, and they they close out that series. Uh, I say uh, it goes to game seven. You want a game seven in that? Yeah, because that's a good one. It's all it's, right. Well, it's, that that has turned into the series now. Yeah. Uh, I I told you before when we talked on Thursday that the Memphis Golden State one was because it was ballsy. It was it was brutal. It was it was fun to watch. Defense, vintage. It was but, vintage. And now uh, Giles now, Giles Gow, uh, Yeah, the, the Warriors look good. And the other series that is now tied up 2-2 two two is Milwaukee and Boston. And Boston, after being down 2-0, has come back with the Thunder, bro. They look 
awesome. And Giannis can't fit. They're, they're deep. They play good defense and team basketball. Oh, yeah. That's been and, their style since the very beginning. And I, I that's hard to beat right now. Oh, yeah. It, it's going to be fun. This is why I tell you all all the time, I don't watch regular season NBA basketball, but playoff basketball, I'll watch some. Because yep. it's getting interesting now. The next round, the conference finals would be absolutely amazing, I think. And uh, we're really going to see some good basketball, especially the teams that are left now, man. You got the Warriors, the Bucks, the Celtics, the Phoenix Suns, the Dallas Mavericks. Uh, I mean, these are fun teams to watch. Yeah, this is this is a really fun playoffs. This year has been very fun. And then you got vintage basketball going around, team basketball going. This is very fun. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a blast, man, like I oh, said. I, I, oh, yeah. It's going to be fun to watch. Uh, nothing else really coming up as far as the basketball uh, playoffs. There's some things that I wanted to get into, too. Uh, this, While we're in the middle of the show, man, you guys have got to hear about this. There's a guy that lost his fantasy. F- I love fantasy football. Oh, I love it, too. I play about three leagues a year. It's a blast. I can only play one because people don't like to pay up. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and people have, like – if you lose, or okay, so a while back, you know, it, you always get upset when the last, the last two or three guys they don't even try, they don't even change the lineups because they're already losing. Uh, I hate that. And so they oh implemented, like a lot of leagues implemented. If you come in last place, <laughs> this is what you got to do. Yeah. Right. I've never heard of anything like this before, and it was amazing. There's a guy that came in last place in his fantasy football team, and you're never gonna guess what last place had to do, bro. Let me see. Let me see. He had to enter a U.S. Open qualifier. Golf. Like, enter a U.S. Open qualifier. <gasps> what? This is absolutely insane. And his league was called the Shiva League, which if you if – you I forgot the TV show that uh, had that on there. But my first question was, how did he get in? <laughs> how? He played, bro. He played a yeah, U.S. Oh Open qualifier. Oh, my God, What? He shot a 112, <laughs> 112, this guy. All right. Eckert, 26, from Oakland Park, Kansas, finished in last place again after carding a 40 over 112, which was 40 strokes behind winner Ryan Art something, I forgot, and, and uh, Andrew Beckler. Uh, <laughs> listen to this. After arriving late for his tea time, this guy arrived late for his U.S. <laughs> Open quality because he lost his fantasy football. He went to the wrong hole. Oh, God. Well, this, this is amazing. This is not bad because he was only five over after two holes, right? He recovered. He parred the, the par four 12th, and then uh, I think he scored a uh, four over on the 13th. Like I mean, his lone Brian spot. And then he was 22 over, uh, 58 on the back nine. He shot a 58 on the back nine. He, this guy actually got away with playing in a U.S. Open qualifier. And Because he, because... he lied on his, uh, on oh, his, on his application. Oh, and they let him. Uh, uh, this is amazing. This is right up there with that football team that was on ESPN. Oh my God! What's it called? Uh, you remember that last year? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I will send you pictures about it. How, yeah. about how their uh, their campus was a regular house. Yeah, they made it. They made up a whole college. Uh, and they get was their, it Bishop they get, Sycamore? Yeah, Bishop there Sycamore. You go, there yes. you go, man. This is right up there with that, man. This is crazy. Oh God, that's amazing. Unreal says Todd Stice, director of rules and competitions for the Central Links Golf. In Kansas City area, which stays the U.S. Open qualifier, said Eckert was able to enter the tournament because he had designated himself as a professional player on his registration form. And, and now, just just for shits and giggles, he he's no longer allowed to play in an amateur league, <laughs> <laughs> like he ever would. But like, he, just for doing that, he uh, he he forfeit is forfeits his amateur status ever in the PGA. <laughs> Listen, if and the thing was. The players that he was playing with found out about it. Like, like his caddy told him like four or five holes into the into the tournament. And guess what? They were like, "We're cool with it, as long as he can keep up. As long as he can keep up with the pace of play, they were fine with it. They passed the vibe. That is, yeah, the 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 best fantasy football last play story ever, hands down. Yeah, I love that. And he played it. Look for that. There's got to be stricter like <laughs> regulations on the PGA Tour if Joe Blow from Kansas City can enter a U.S. Open qualifier. I think now they got to sit down and like, all right. Holy crap. What dude. happened? Why didn't we verify this before? So well, that's amazing. That's amazing. Only amateurs are subject to USGA rules that require 1.4 handicap or lower to play in U.S. Open qualifiers. So he must have lied on everything. Oh, yeah. 
Like, I'm a scratch golfer. Or I, I don't know, man. <laughs> it said Eckert should be expecting a letter from the USGA soon, which will inform him that he can no longer compete in events because of his high score. He also has lost his amateur status by designating himself as a pro. This is his response. <laughs> I can't imagine his amateur status is of concern to him. This is what they to say. Yeah. Wow. Oh, God. Good for him. Yeah. That's Whoa. like that's like someone sneaking onto the NFL field and like going out for one of the plays. And they lie about the resume. Yeah, and I mean, jeez, oh it's like I like I want to find out who came up with that idea. And because just, you, you don't, you yeah. don't get arrested for it. No, you don't. Like if you run on a field, any sports event, or do something like that, you, you probably get arrested. Yeah, this guy's not gonna get arrested. He's got a memory of a lifetime. He's never gonna make it anyways. He did, all he did was lose his fan. Man, I want to know what the Shivas next year. Like, if you come in last place, how do you top that? Yes. That's, that's the thing. Like, what do Whoa. you do next? What do you do next? Oh, my God. <laughs> the best last place ever. Yeah. Hands in, in down. that fantasy football league, man. The guy got to go enter and, and, and made it through the whole thing. <laughs> then showed up, went to the wrong hole, and shoots a 112 <laughs> with pros. That's amazing. I give him props. Yeah. Yeah. I give him mad props. I, I, I wouldn't even be mad if I got banned, bro. No. Yeah. Because now you got a letter to prove that you did everything. That's amazing. That's awesome. Yeah. Good for him. <clears throat> Another thing happened over the weekend. Uh, Canelo. Don't talk about it, man. I know you were going to be upset about this. <sighs> Canelo of course, of got course I am. his ass beat. Yeah, but well deserved. You got well deserved ass beating. Tom Kim, Tom Kim chiming in too. Uh, Tom Kim, that's Enrique. Enrique joining the show, you know, that he he uh, helps produce over here too, man. And Christian, Christian's over here as well helping out. Um, but we're over here talking about Canelo now. Uh, the golf thing was absolutely hysterical. But yeah. Bevel, is that how you pronounce it? I think Bevel, yeah, Bevel. Russian, yeah, because I didn't watch the fight. I watched the highlights because I knew for the very get-go he wasn't going to get out of it. Like he wasn't gonna win. Dim- I knew Dimitri Bebel. Dimitri Bebel, yeah. And uh, then I saw that they didn't play the the Russian national anthem, nothing like that, because the whole uh, situation going on over there. They didn't do none of that. But he was twenty and zero, and then I think now he's twenty one and zero. I kind of saw it coming. Huh? That's funny. I d- okay. I have a few. I have a few thoughts on this fight. All right. Let's Leading see. up, because I follow boxing pretty well. Leading up to this fight, I didn't see Canelo train like he usually does. I didn't see the hype. Uh, it just wasn't there from him. Um, I know he wanted to fight on Mexican Independence Day. I know he wanted to have this fight somewhere else. I know that. But it still doesn't matter. I thought Canelo was a superior fighter to Bebo. I did. I didn't think that Bebo had a chance to win this. Um, and now, this looks bad on his – don't – listen. No. Nobody no. – Nobody no. compare Canelo to Floyd Mayweather. Hell anymore. no. Don't do it. I'm sorry. This takes uh, – not that he was in the conversation before, but some people say that Canelo was better. It's, he's not, and he won't be. No. that This loss was terrible, and Mayweather never – Mayweather's 15-0. <laughs> like, so I don't want to hear about Canelo being better than Mayweather, first of all. And it's a bad loss for him. If you look it's at very this, bad. He only won. I watched the fight uh, or the rerun of it. And I, I, you know, fast forwarding through it and whatever, but he only won like three of those rounds, man. He yeah. got his ass kicked. Yeah. Like he did. Yeah. And it was sad. And another yeah. thing about him getting his ass kicked is the rest go for, for him. Like he, he barely lost that fight. And he, because of the, the way the scoring is set up for Canelo, y'all can say it's, it's, y'all can say they didn't, they didn't. Yes, they did. They tried to let Canelo win that fight. You have to dominate Canelo almost every round in order to beat him or the judges are going to give it to you to, to him yeah. every time well, yeah. people dominated there was no way that they could have given that fight to canelo and if they did it would have been very bad on, on canelo he, he like come on man like i am speechless because you know i am i'm mexican and all that and i i hate to see him lose yeah and but hey man it happens but he is going to come back stronger yeah i think he will yeah. this sets up uh, you know to your point this sets up a a, re, a big rematch, oh, hands down. But yeah, because he, he he wants a rematch. Yeah. But I, I think he just didn't like you said in the, at the beginning of this. Oh, uh, he just didn't come prepared. He didn't come prepared at that's all. What I, that's what I was saying. I didn't see him, and usually you see his training, but like I just didn't see him prepping for this. I I thought 
that maybe he took this a little too lightly. And I man, so. dude, yeah. uh, people were teeing off on him. I mean, tea, I don't think he was in shape. I think he maybe like it, it was it was bad. It was an ugly look for Canelo. It, it was. It was it an was. ugly look yeah. for Canelo it was. after after some of the fights that he had gone through. His his previous three or four fights just domination, man. Yeah. I mean, knocking people out with body shots and just like I mean, destroying people. And then he just got he got work. He did. And it's not like Dimitri Bevel Bevel is like top ten in the, like boxing ever. He's not no. even close. No, not at all. I think he just got the best of him that day. I think Canelo just wasn't giving it his all. Because he, he was only going for body shots. That was it. Yep. That was it. But I know the next, the next uh, turnaround is going to be very different. Uh, I'm going to order that. Uh, like, I will order the rematch. Yeah. I'll watch that rematch for sure. I mean, I'm not paying for it. But just, because I'll, I'll, of B, just because B-Ball won, I will watch the rematch. If Canelo would have won and they did a rematch, I'm not, I'm not going to watch it. I, oh, if, it was, if Canelo would have won, I don't think B-Ball would have won a rematch. <laughs> well, yeah, no probably shot. not. No, we're probably shot. right on that. But, uh, man, welcome into Sports with Balls. We got a, we got a little bit of time left here, but uh, what? A, Enrique's here with me. Christian's here with me. We're over sitting over at Christian's Tailgate 2000. 2000 bag me, man. Come get some food over here. All their stuff is amazing. I just had the uh, quesadillas. Woo! Absolutely fantastic. My son's sitting over here. He's eating. What's he? Eating? Oh, nachos. The nachos, nachos. nachos. The, the, the wings are the bomb. They got me on a wing kick here. I started ordering wings at other restaurants now, which I don't normally do. Really? Yeah, but I've, I've been ordering some wings. Hmm. Delicious. Five area locations, any one of them. Order it on uh, Uber Eats or whatever delivery app that you get. Uh, go ahead and get you get you some food from Christian's Tailgate. Like I said, five area locations is probably one where you are. John Morant. Out for uh, the rest of the playoffs, probably. They're down 3-1. I, I see them probably going out. Um, and like I said earlier in the show, Tom Brady gets a 10-year, $375 million contract uh, to be the lead analyst for Fox Sports. Also, in other news that came out today, it's not that big of a deal. We were just talking about Canelo. Mike Tyson, who – I don't think he punched the guy on the plane. I've watched it a few times. He was just shoving him, basically. Will not be charged. Yeah, he won't. The, no. D, the DA, the DA uh, went ahead and dropped it, which is probably really good for Tyson. Man, last thing he needs is more issues, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Because uh, come on, he was annoying Tyson. Oh yeah, he was bugging the crap out of him. And that guy has a prior record, a uh, big one. Oh for real? Yeah, he's oh, got yeah. a bad prior record. So uh, yeah, I don't, I don't see they, they weren't gonna. Pre- well, they didn't press charges, so there you go for that. Um, what else do we got going on? The Broncos and the Browns are going to play on Christmas Day. We haven't they haven't released a schedule yet for the NFL. It comes out in a few days. It was on Thursday, right? It comes out on Thursday. Is it this Thursday? I think on the 13th. It could it could come out this Thursday. Yeah. But uh back to the lead story that we were talking about at the top of the show is Tom Brady gets 10 years, $375 million to become the lead an- analyst when retiring. I'm just gonna tell you now, it ain't gonna work out. To I, don't, I don't know if oh, it won't work out. No, I don't think so. I don't think. T- Look, I told you before. I'm not turning. OK, I'm going to I'm going to listen to the first game. OK, because I want to see how it goes. Yeah, because I just don't see Tom as an analyst. I, I mean, don't see him. I, Look, he's great to have on those commercials and he's Tom Brady, but he's kind of goofy. He is. He's kind of a goofy dude. And I'm not look. I like Tom. I like him on the field. I think he's great, but I I don't see him as an analyst. I, I don't. Like, I don't think it would work for Fox. I just think other people are gonna be smarter than he is. And not that you need to be the smartest guy in the room. But I mean, some you got of those Tony guys, Romo on. Uh, yeah, on the other one. It makes sense. He ain't the smartest one. <laughs> no, but he's energetic, bro. Like Tom will get after it. I mean, Tony will get after it. And I love that. I love that. Now, if you had Tony Romo and Tom Brady, that's what I want. Now that that's what I, I want to get into. I, like, yeah, because I, I'm telling you, maybe it won't. He won't work on Fox, but maybe with him, that would be amazing. Yeah, he needs that. Like, I forgot the guy's name. I'll, I'll look it up in a little bit. That's going to be on with him, but he's going to make or break Tom. He really is. Yeah, because Tom, Tom can't be a lead and an analyst. I don't mm-hmm. think. Man. No, I mean, who who knows? He could step in the role and be amazing, but I, I doubt it. I doubt. It. I don't see Tom coming in there and being this baller like <laughs> analyst and he's not is he gonna yell and scream when like new england i, I gotta see his game schedule because maybe i will tune into one or two but, yeah boy. but usually you don't tune into a football game because of who's you don't even know who's on the broadcast no you know mm. nobody ever has a clue 
You don't tune in. In fact, I watch Red Zone. <laughs> and they don't tell you who the analysts are. Like, you know, I, you don't ever tune in to an, an NFL game because of who's announcing it. It's because it's because of the players. The, the yeah, teams that are true. playing. Yeah. But sometimes uh, whoever is announcing the game makes it a bit better. So I like that, too. Yeah. So, hey, you never know. It could have worked. could not. But he's getting paid. Fantasy football rankings came out. We were just talking about the guy that he finished last and got onto a PGA Tour event. Uh, well, a qualifier. Well, yeah, U.S. Open qualifier. That was absolutely amazing. If y'all didn't listen to it, go back and listen to the show. It's funny. Um, here's your quarterback rankings of fantasy football because that is what's coming up. One through ten quarterbacks. This is interesting. Okay. Who would be your number one? Uh, not Patrick Mahomes. Not Lamar. I don't know. Maybe I like Burrow. Kind of strong. Josh Allen. Him. Josh, Josh Allen's number one. What? Yeah. And I, I look, he's got good rushing ability. And, and I like Josh Allen up there. I don't like this. Uh, Patrick Mahomes is number two on here. No, Patrick I don't like that. Mahomes just lost Tyreek Hill. Nope. I don't like that. Mm-mm. Get it off. I don't either. I, I don't either. I, I, look. He's it's his fourth year in the league. I don't know how much he's going to use his legs. Plus, they don't want him to get injured. So I do not like Pat. I would put Pat Mahomes at five or six. Put him at seven. I like that. Justin Herbert, number three. I love dude. Okay. Herbert might be number one. Yeah. That kid is a baller. Lamar Jackson, number four. Ooh, I don't know. He lost a great wide receiver, too. Put him 10. Kyler Murray is number five. Now, I would have Murray further up the board at number three if he didn't lose. Yeah, D Hop, D Hop. Yeah, for six games. I think I like where it's at. I think five, maybe five or six. Now Kyler Murray coming back because they just got another badass wide receiver. You know, like I for the first six game of the season, first six games of the season, Arizona. Like Kyler Murray is going to have to really, really get out there. So I would pick up Kyler Murray at at five or maybe eight would be the lowest. Yeah, right. Yeah. Next would be Joe Burrow at number six. Joe Shicey. This is what confuses me. They got Jalen Hurts at number seven. Pardon? Yeah. Jalen Hurts <laughs> is bottom, like mid mid pack for me. They got him above Tom Brady. <laughs> Tom Brady led the no. league in passing last year. Oh my God. Who who made this and list? And touchdowns. Who made this list? This is ESPN's list, bro. That's why we're that's why we're sports with balls. Jalen Hurts would be like 15. They got Deshaun Watson at 13. Oh, my God. They got Dak Prescott at nine. Y'all lost y'all in heads. Well. Dude, they got worse. Yeah. The Cowboys got worse. He lost the one dude that made his offense steady. Yep. Cooper gone. <laughs> Man, uh, that's what I mean. I love fantasy football. They got Matt Stafford at 11. Y'all are nuts, bro. Absolutely nuts. Stafford's higher. And Derek Carr. This is the shocker. 14. Team. Nope. Mm, nope. Nope. Burn Holy the list. crap. Burn the list. Derek Burn the Carr's list. top, almost top five. Yeah. He's got the, the best wide receiver in the league now. And he threw over 4,000 uh, 4, yards last year and had Henry Ruggs killing people on the road. <laughs> like, I mean, he had his head coach, uh, you know, uh, uh, fired. He had all kinds of people. Like, and he threw 4,000 yards, bro. This is sports oh balls. Don't God. laugh. He did. Henry Ruggs did. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> Oh, my God, man. Aaron Rodgers, 12. Man. And then the list gets – it gets crap. Burns, bro, burns <laughs> Trey man. Lance is 15. Trey Lance. <laughs> what? Trey Lance should be 25th. Trey Lance is above two attack of ILO. No. Gosh, bro. Burn the list. Wow. Mm-mm. All right, let's move on to running backs because that's hysterical. You got to fire the person who made that list. <laughs> All right, number one running back, honestly, Jonathan Taylor. Uh, yeah. Had him last year. He's just absolute beast. Uh, two, Austin Eckler. Uh, I would put him three, four, five. Number three, Christian McCaffrey. I don't know. Christian McCaffrey needs to have a bounce back year. He needs to. He, he was good the first three games, and he got hurt, obviously. He came back for two games, got hurt again. And so he was out for the rest of the season, but needs to have a bounce back year. Derrick Henry's four. Uh, I, for me, he's number one. Derrick Henry? Yeah. Ryan Tannehill's okay. having issues up there. I think Derrick Henry. Look, he was he was set last year. Remember to shatter the NFL rushing record. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah. He was going to shatter that record. Yeah. And he got hurt. So Derrick Henry and then Jonathan Taylor. 
Yeah, well, one yuck, either changeable. Okay. Like, yeah. you know. I see it. I see it. Because Henry would have been way better than Jonathan Taylor. If he, Jonathan Taylor blew up after Henry got hurt. Yeah. Right? So John, I think Henry would have just shattered it. But yeah. uh, Najee Harris at five. That's fine. Delvin Cook. Alvin Kamara at seven. Interesting. Mm, I don't know. Joe Mixon should be above Alvin Kamara, I believe. You got Leonard Fournette at nine. That's that's, and then it just gets, I mean, just gets wild, dude. You've got DeAndre Swift at ten, Jav- Javante Williams for Denver at eleven, Aaron Jones for Green Bay at twelve. Aaron Jones should be top five because Green Bay lost Devontae Adams. Mm-hmm. They're going to do a lot of checkdowns. Yeah, Aaron Jones is going to be a, a top. I'll just say top ten. Okay. They got it. They got him at 12. Uh, he should be seven, five to nine, somewhere in there. Okay. All right. I'm with you on that one. James Conner, the touching leader, thir- uh, 13. Nick Chubb, 14. Uh, woof. Those are steals if you get them. Saquon Barkley is 18. I think Saquon should have an incredible year this year. And then the shock, this is the biggest one for me. Again, it's, 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 the, it's the Las Vegas Raiders. Josh Jacobs is 19. What? He should be higher. Way higher. Way higher. Whoa. Josh Jacobs is a monster. Brees Hall, the uh, first running back took uh, taken in the NFL draft this year for the New York Jets is 23. He actually might uh, – that, that kid might do very well. And Travis Yente Jr., okay? Travis Yente <clears throat> like, was the incredible running back out of Clemson. They got hurt in uh, spring training. Okay. He was picked by Jacksonville. Remember, they took uh, they took Sunshine, then they took his running back, Travis Yente, ETN. And uh, – He's coming back off his surgery. They got him listed at 24 in here. If that kid's healthy, look out for him. He could be a steal in round two or three because he might be a lot of fun to watch. It, or even like four or five. If he's still available in round four, uh, I, I would snag Travis Etienne. Kareem Hunt down there at 31. Another huge one for me, Tony Pollard. Tony Pollard is 33. Hmm. He should be way before that. Way before? That Dallas. If Dallas is going to succeed and get I think Tony Pollard is going to have to have a lot of touches. He was their lone bright spot. Yeah. Where's Zeke at? Oh. I want to see, I want to see where uh, Zeke's at. Let's go. 20th. No. Lower. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I mean, dude, he's right before all the backups. <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I'm just oh, telling you, he's 20. God. Like, he's right before all the backups, man. Like, J.K. Dobbins for Baltimore is 21. That tells you where where we rank, yep. where we rank Zeke at. Yep. That's Ouch, a joke. Bro. That's a joke. Ouch. Holy crap, man. It's horrible. Absolutely hysterical, man. But uh, 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 let me go through the wide receivers real quick, and then uh, we, we'll get out of here, man. Because this, we, I can sit, I can spend all day on, on fantasy football. Oh, uh, I know you can. Yeah, we got a fantasy football special, and before uh, it comes up, we'll, we'll definitely get into it. But yeah, uh, real quick with your wide receivers: number one, Cooper Cup, obviously. Number two, Jamar Chase. I'll take that. Number three, Justin Jefferson, Debo, Devonte, Stefan. This is the first questionable for for me. Was well. I, CD Lamb is number seven for Dallas. And I, I get it. He's going to get more looks. Yeah. Like Coop's gone. Mm-hmm. Like, so it, maybe. I just. Dak, uh, Dak Prescott is not that accurate of a thrower. He's not, no. And, and CD Lamb's not that accurate of a route runner. It's a questionable call. So uh, that, that's that's interesting for me. Tyreek Hill for Miami, obviously being traded over there is number eight. Ooh. Mike Evans, nine. AJ Brown, since he got it traded to Philly, is number 10. Jalen Hurts isn't that accurate of a quarterback either. Mm, I don't know, but I got faith in him. I got faith in him. A.J. Brown, uh, whew. all right, T. Higgins for Cincinnati, number 11. That's interesting. D.K. Metcalf is up there high for Seattle at number 12. D.J. Moore for Carolina. Let's see. Let's go down to where Hopkins is. Wow, Michael Thomas, 29. Yeah, he's not going to be on in the high ones right now. Yeah, but wouldn't you take it? He's not even on the top 50, man. Dang, that's crazy. Not in the top 50? Uh-uh. I guess wow. they, had, they don't have him on there because he's missing. Well, I mean, look, if you're going off fantasy points, I mean, yeah, he's not he's not going to score in the top he's not, because he's, he's, he's missing almost half the season. Yeah. So, so, would you pick him up? That's a great question. Would you pick him up? In what round? Huh? Top like, three rounds? No, like if nobody picked him up in the first round. Oh, you talking about in general? In yeah, general, of course in general. you would. Yeah, he's a. I mean, he's somebody you want to stash on your bench. He he should go probably round. They might be right on this. He should probably go round four. Okay, round four. I see it. You pick up a, a running back, a, a great, you know, a, a guy that's going to play. Uh, and, and and let's not forget that Hopkins was hurt last year too. Yeah. So I, 
Yeah, round four, I think, is, okay. is probably where, where Hopkins should go. All right, all right. You know, somewhere in there. All right, man. Once again, I want to thank Christian's tailgate, tailgate five Houston locations here in, in uh, uh, Houston, Texas, obviously. Get your food, get your drink on from Christian's tailgate, man. They are absolutely amazing. Brian White. Best attorney in the business. You want a real attorney with real results? Give him a shout. 713 500 5000. My boy, Corey Fitz, F I T Z roofing.com. H A R C A certified. 832 521 3001. Steven at Clean Fight. Man, we hadn't talked about this. Have you ordered yours? I have not. Man, you get on there today. Go to, go to thecleanathlete.org. This stuff is amazing. It's an all-natural spray that that defends against the flu, COVID, against absolutely everything. You spray it on your hands. It's all natural. You can use it around anything. You spray it on your face. You don't even have to wear a mask. You just spray this stuff. You're ready to go, man. Ooh, I got to get mine soon then. 281-733-4150. The stuff is phenomenal. But, uh, yeah, man, that's going to do it. You got any uh, last-second thoughts before we get out of here? And we'll be back on Thursday. I got some big news to share for you all on Thursday, uh, Thursday evening. Oh, all right, all right. Sounds good. You got any good news? Uh, good oh, news. happy Mexican Mother's Day. Oh, yeah, that too. Happy belated uh, U.S. and Canada Mother's Day. That was on Sunday. Yep. And I like to see the London games for the MLB. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, is it is this year, next year, next, and yeah. 2026? That'll be fun. Yeah, that'll, that'll be, be fun. fun. I saw a video of, of uh, ML, well, not MLB, uh, some uh, some games down in Mexico City baseball yes. game. They go Those, wild, bro. Yeah, everything's cheap. They go they're nuts in dollar there. Dollar hot dogs, dollar water, dollar Cokes, whole uh, plate of... Carnitas and all I that. told you about I took I took my daughter this past week because it's her birthday actually today. Happy birthday again, baby. Uh I took them to the game. Now it was dollar dog night, so I was like, it's gonna be cheaper. Yeah. Dollar dog night was fine. I got five of them. Then I ordered a Coke and a water. Nineteen dollars. I still haven't went to a Nationals game, but Bro, gas am... is four dollars a gallon. Yep. You're charging me nineteen dollars <laughs> for a Coke and a water. That's crazy, man. Y'all got me messed up. Mm-mm. Hey guys, thank y'all for paying attention to Sports with Balls. I'm Jeff Michael. Thank Enrique. Thank Christian for uh, helping us out, man. We'll see you guys Thursday, man. We are out of here.